Okay, so I'm going to talk about uh, program environment and uh, compilation, uh, basically on Cori and KNL. So before we talk about uh, <coughs> uh, compiling, how to compile codes, actually I want to mention like uh, NERSC has a lot of pre-compiled applications and libraries. So we use um, module utility to manage our, uh, our software, nearly all the software. So uh, for those who are new to module, the module is um, is a tool we use. It can dynamically modify users' shell environment. So you don't have to make your shell environment <coughs> big to include all the software you have. So you can selectively uh, configure your shell. So usually it, uh, um, it uh, works as by loading or unloading module file. So a module file, it contains the information to configure the shell. So you can uh, define paths and load the library paths and main paths, et cetera. And they also can load some dependent modules and they can do more. So uh, you can use module avail command to see the available software um, at NERSC. And the module command looks for module paths, the environment, um, the directories contained in that environment variable to see uh, what are available. So um, we recommend before you really try to compile anything, you can take a look and uh, many of the hard to compile stuff already there. So you can make use of the already installed software. So some of the uh, software has access control, something like VASP. Uh, it's open to um, the users who have own license only. So other than that, most of our uh, software are open to everybody. So this talk will focus on, on basically the basics of uh, compiling code. So I will talk about how you can take care of the compilation and link lines. Basically, you can see the few components in the red boxes. Basically, um, I'm going to talk about the compilers and compiler flags to use, and then the include paths, and library paths, and then libraries to put in the link line. So I will generally talk about how to compile on Cori and um, uh, Edison and Cori as well as just a general form, and then I will um, expand a little bit for KNL. Uh, so this is a Cori and Haswell configuration. So as it, I, I want to read through all those. Uh, you can find this information in our web. Basically, I want to emphasize uh, the Cori and the Edison, especially KNL uh, with the rest of the two. Um, it has, they have a sufficiently different architecture than affect, uh, uh, so they deserve like separate build for each platform. So when we say this, we have some backup effect. So this is a slide we, we prepared for other purpose. But I want you to look at this, this red bar and this, this red bar. So the difference of them is just the compilation. One enabled the KNL specific uh, flag. Uh, this one enabled the KNL uh, specific flag, which is there, the minus x. Uh, Mike dash AVX 512, and the other one is not. This is a enabled Haswell specific flag. So basically, it is a comparison uh, when you're running uh, Haswell binary on KNL, what you would get. So basically, depending on the reference, you will see 35%. This is a uh, running K uh, Haswell binary on KNL. That is the KNL binary, you can see about 35% uh, performance difference. So that's why we uh, recommend uh, you'd better build separate binary for each platform. So we have three compilers available on our systems, uh, Cori and Edison. So when we talk about the program environments, usually we talk about the compiler and its matching <coughs> uh, software stack. So software stack, we have two components. Uh, one is from uh, Cray provided, and the other one is NERSC staff provided. So if you log into Cori, actually if you type module list, 
you can see there are a bunch of modules already loaded for you. We call it default uh, program environment. So on our systems, we uh, chose Intel as their uh, default uh, as a default program environment. I don't know what's missing there. It's a the slides uh, being cut off here. <laughs> Not sure I, what, what I put there, but uh, basically, uh, just to say um, our default is Intel. So there is a good reason for us to do that uh, because our processors are Intel, Intel processors. Edison is IB Bridge and Cori is Haswell and, uh, and the KNL. They are all Intel processors. So uh, the tip number one to compile codes on, on our systems, on Cray systems, actually use the compiler wrappers. So for Fortran code, use FTN. For C code, use CC and C, capital CC for C++ code. So, um, so the, there are some difference if you are used to work on a uh, department clusters like Linux box, you may use to get used to um, the you know the, the using the um, <coughs> native compiler calls. In that case, all the compilers by default they would build dynamically linked binaries. But the compiler wrappers on our system, actually this is a Cray provided. So they use uh, the dash static by default which means it will build a statically linked binary. So this is for performance at scale, but by option, if you prefer, uh, you can build a dynamically linked one by using the extra flag. So it's a dash dynamic, or uh, you can define an environment variable here to make sure the linking is dynamic. But keep in mind, like if you run like uh, your application at scale, then uh, at a large scale, the dynamically linked binaries may suffer some performance um, hit. So in general, we recommend static uh, linking. So one thing I want to mention is uh, compiler wrappers do cross compilation. So we compile on login nodes. And then the resulting binaries will be running on, uh, will be run them on computer nodes. So on Cori Haswell, because login nodes is Haswell and computer nodes Haswell, they are fine. There is no cross compilation issue basically. But for <coughs> if you compile on Cori login nodes and compile for KNL, then you may run into issue like the generated binary would not run on Haswell. So we now to talk about how you use uh, configure script and uh, other build system like make and CMake, et cetera. But I want to mention for the configure line, if you do cross compiling on login node build for um, uh, KNL, then you may need to put this dash host equal to more general uh, x80.64 there just to overcome that uh, configure compiler check issue. Or sometime you may need to directly compile on, your, uh, on the computer node. So in that case, I would recommend you use this interactive QoS. Helen will talk about more uh, about how to run, but this is a high, um, you know, high priority queue. So it basically, in five minutes, you either get on node or you, you just uh, the submission will be canceled. So it will be quick. So you can try this and compile directly on computer nodes. But one <coughs> note for that is KNL is pretty slow. The clock speed is almost half of the Haswell. So you may see it's really slow unless you have to. Uh, usually, you need to compile on login nodes. So there are reasons why we uh, recommend the compiler wrappers. Definitely, the number one reason is it's easy because it help, it handles all the link line, um, I mean the compile and link line automatically. So all you need to do is uh, compiler wrapper and then your code name. That will be automatically linked to the uh, libraries. But what library to link depends on uh, what 
what kind of modules loaded in your environment. So um, before that, actually compiler wrapper to multiple things. So first thing, it will include the architecture specific flags into the compilation. So for Cori KNL, if you load the, the right uh, module, then it will include that X mic dash AVX 512 uh, flag, which is uh, include the specific um, instructions for KNL. Uh, this is for Intel. For GNU, it will include this. Uh, in other words, you know, all the compiler, I mean, the process specific flags will be added automatically for you. So this is um, important thing compiler wrapper does. And the other one is uh, it will, uh, depending on the modules loaded here, if we load this mic KNL on the Cori KNL nodes, the back end, when it links to the libraries, it will pick up the right one. I mean, some of the Cray provided libraries and the NERSC provided libraries have a separate build for uh, KNL and Haswell. So in that case, compiler wrapper can you know, selectively, pro I mean, choose the proper library to link. So in, that's what's happened in the back end. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing. And th the other important thing is, um, although compiler wrappers do a lot for you, but if you want to explicitly list something in the compile link line and overwrite the default, you can do it. So it will take the uh, precedence over the default, you know, what compiler wrapper does. So pretty often we see that some user code, it has a minus X host option. So I would like to just mention, it, you, you can, you know, remove that if you use compiler wrappers. <coughs> Especially that one will uh, optimize the code to the host where you're running the, com uh, the, the compilation on. So this is not a good one. If you use that, it will overwrite the compiler flags, the, the minus X flags added by the compiler wrapper. So pay attention to that. So what the compiler wrappers link by default? So if you log into Cori and then just get the hello world uh, skeleton code and then just compile it under the hood, it will link to multiple libraries. So if you type a module list, we have a, a lot of those listed, but the one directly will interact with your compilation is uh, something like a Cray MPitch, and then cr here like Cray Haswell uh, module, and then also the most important one is the Intel, uh, the compiler modules. So if you look at, the, this is a little, um, you may not see right now, but uh, you can later, look at the slides. So basically you can see all the details happening under the hood. So here we can see um, because we load Cray libsci, which contains uh, the BLAS and LAPEC and scale LAPEC and all those uh, libraries, linear algebra libraries. So you can see in the link line somewhere around um, Yeah, I can't see quickly, but it's a uh, it's linked to the it links to the libsci library. So the those LAPEX, scale LAPEX, plus and those libraries will be linked in by default. So and also the MPH Cray MPH module is loaded, so the MPI library will be linked by default. So um, here. Um, I want to just uh, remind you one trick. trick so there is a minus WL and dash Y and then the symbols. This, this option is linker option. It will be very useful to check, uh, especially when we know like multiple libraries support the same, you know, routines, uh, li uh, you know, functionalities. Then you want to see where the exact uh, the, the symbols come from. Then this one can tell you where it is from. So. It's cut off down here, but you can see in, in my case, I, I was compiling in the default environment. It will be linked to libsci by default. So compiler recommendation, I would be very cautious on this. So 
uh, we may do like a, a test with a bunch of uh, benchmark and tell you which compiler is best. But it's a, it's a moving target. Actually, we it's hard to just to say which one is best. So my recommendation is uh, just uh, every compiler has its own advantages. So something like Intel, if you use this this Intel compiler, you have a better chance to get the processor uh, specific optimization. Especially we have seen a good performance with the Intel compiler if you use it on KNL. Uh, especially the processor is, is new, uh, you, you will have a better chance to use uh, Intel compiler. And after a while, I think other compiler will also catch up, but uh, that's uh, one of the advantages. You can get optimized version for specific uh, processor type. And then Cray compiler is, uh, is a really good one, especially you use Fortran code. And it has a lot of new features and optimizations. And it and Cray also have uh, a lot of optimized libraries come with their software stack. So this is a good option for um, some of the codes. And then also the GNU is widely adopted by the uh, you know, open software. So it's also good to use that. So my recommendation is uh, if you work with a, um, a third party code, then you can use the compilers, the vendor or code developers used to test their code. And then if you really care about the performance, then you can explore the different compilers. So the compiler flags, uh, actually there are a lot of options you can use. Um, but I would be more conservative here. So usually I think default is good enough. Let's say for Intel compiler, if you don't do anything, by default, the optimization level would be minus 02. So this is pretty good. In, and in addition, we have that processor specific flag, that, that minus AX flag, a uh, minus X flag already there. So the default would be really good. So GNU actually the default is zero. So you need to take care of the, you put something there for optimization. Cray, they claim they use 02, but basically they are level is 03 is pretty high. But definitely the default is sufficient. And then we would recommend like a more conservative optimization level, basically default. That's I, I would like to say. But uh, uh, one thing I want to mention is uh, different compiler has a different default behavior. So I would recommend you check with uh, the compiler variables output, which is the, the line over here. It will tell you what kind of compiler flags entered the compilation, and also a lot of uh, link information as well. So it's good to keep in mind the verbal option is a really useful tool. So here, I want to mention when you compile, remember to do the validity check. So some software provides some you know, test suites. You should be, you'd better go through those. And if you are not certain, and if you really used some unsafe optimization, especially related to the floating point um, optimization, then you'd better check with the debug version and make sure your code is um, doing what it's, what it's expected to do. So uh, one thing I would like to mention is uh, regarding the default uh, behavior. So the Intel and the GNU compiler, I mean, regarding the OpenMP uh, default behavior. So the default number of threads this compiler would use is here. I said that all CPU slots available, uh, for, available for, the, for the binary. So here the, the process uh, thread affinity is important. So if your binary is not pinned to the uh, certain CPU, it has uh, some room to drift around, then by default it will use all the cores or CPUs available on, on that. So it's an important difference. So Cray by default it will use uh, OpenMP threads only one. So I, I would like to mention this is because our compiler wrappers it does a lot of things for you and link to the system provided library. And many of them actually is a multi-threaded library. So maybe you accidentally you link to the um, OpenMP library. Probably 
if you don't provide the correct thread affinity, a process affinity, you may run into some issues. It's not, it's not often, but uh, it's better to be aware of this. So I would emphasize the verbose output from compiler wrappers. Actually, I, I think um, I learned so much from this output. I think this is the most useful tool. Especially Cray, uh, they, they do a lot of for us, so they want us to do nothing, just to provide the source code to the, after the compiler wrappers. And then under the hood, they try to optimize the library structures, and they name differently, and restructure, and over time, they change the library name. So if you do this verbose output, you can learn uh, what is the library names, and what the path is included, and all the details it can tell you. So especially sometimes we, we receive a user ticket to say, oh, OK, I don't know how to link to MKL. Right, so in that case, we usually say, okay, go to the lab, web and find the advisor, the link advisor. But you can learn a lot from the verbose output as well. So something like a cre uh, compiler provide that minus MKL option. This is Intel specific option. If you use that, then you will see the compiler verbose output. It will link here like. Uh, uh, the MKL library. MKL library is not a single one. It has a multiple choice and, and there are multiple libraries to put. So if you do it manually, you, you may feel it's, it's too difficult. But you, you can, if you really need to do that, then you can look at this and then modify as needed. So you can see what, what's entered the link line. So I think this is a really good place uh, to learn stuff uh, about what's happening under the hood. So regarding the available libraries, so as I mentioned earlier, we have two big sets. One come from uh, Cray provided uh, software, and then another one is NERSC staff provided. So Cray uh, packages, it, they are packed under the Cray developer toolkit. We call it the CDT all the times. Usually this release like every month, but we uh, basically install every three months, we release one major major version. So usually CDT, the version goes like two digits for year and then dot and another two digits for the month. So you can see from the, um, the CDT version, you can see when and it's released and in which year you can find out those info. So to find out what are available, again, we need to use this module avail. And then if you uh, care about the specific uh, the modules with specific string, you can use this minus capital S. This is actually the craze addition to the module utility. So this one can list all the uh, modules contain specific string. Usually module avail and then give some name, it will always list some modules start from that you know, string. But this one will list all. So this is a useful one. And uh, for NERSC one, uh, I didn't have a chance to mention that module pass. Actually, if you do echo dollar module pass in capital, actually you can see multiple passes included in that you know, environment variable. And some of them come from OPT and Cray PE, somewhere like that. And some of them comes from user common area. So, Whatever comes from user common, those are provided by NERSC staff. And uh, wait, I'm almost, the time is up. <laughs> OK, so uh, I, yeah, so basically, so once you find some libraries available, then you can do. Um, yeah, you can do uh, just a module load and then use the compiler wrapper and then the, the name. This is how you do it. So I put, I listed some examples over here. You can read later. Basically, it's just to use a compiler wrapper and then do that. So I want to mention a couple of things. So for NERSC provided library, actually we are in the process of combining like a, a crazy, 
convention, so some of the modules are already in the create format, so they can interact with the compiler wrappers. So you load the module, compiler wrapper can pick up the include path and library path, but some of them not. But we define environment variable, something like GSL, it will define good one for you to use, so it's convenient for you just to put the environment variable there. So I put an example of how to link with MKL, and then also how you link dynamically. And also, um, some of the users, uh, they, they want to use Intel compiler. So this is the exception when you should not use compiler wrapper, because compiler wrapper, by default, it will link to the Cray MPG, unless you just unload that Cray MPG in your default environment. So this is an example. So a couple of tips, like when you run into unresolved symbols, this is the tricks I'm using all the time. So basically, uh, one thing people easily to ignore is some of the library, you find it's there, but the compiler wrapper says it doesn't exist, it's not found. One of the reason could be the, the library in shared library format only. So that's the problem. So this is one of the case. And another one, the when static build, you, you, I mean the library order matters. So we use this WL start group and then WL end group and put everything in between. That will slow down the you know, linking because it will repeatedly search for the missing symbols. So that is uh, needed when you sometime, yeah. And then also, if you can't find the symbols, you can go to run this read elf, or you first grab this, this stuff and go to the potential directories and search for the symbol, and then look, read the symbol and see if that is defined, then that's available in that library. So you can put that in your link line. So uh, for KNL, actually, since I, I don't have time, so the, the number one thing I want to mention is just switch to the Cray PE mic KNL and then compile as, as usual, as you do for the uh, Cory Haswell. Okay, I think I can skip all those. Basically, it's uh, just uh, more uh, details about the practice tips for you. And uh, one thing I want to mention is uh, if you compile codes and you want to reserve the preserve the program environment, then there is a tools to, you can use. It's module snap. We have a website and talk about how you use it. But basically, module snapshot is do the snapshot for your module environment. And then later, you can do module restore the, the file name. You can get the original uh, program environment. And then also, there are CDT modules. This is a create develop toolkit module, can make you swap to previous CDT version. And then also really big um, tip for you is using shift, uh, shifter. So this one can preserve not only the user can control, user controlled software, it can also preserve the OS. So we have a web instruction on, you know, learning more information on that. And also at the beginning, you can see module list. There is ALTD module, which can help you um, retrieve some linking information. So you can look into the web and also run that command and see what you can get. So uh, I, I put up the, our update policy here, basically just tell you every three months we install new CDT, and then every six months we will um, update a program environment. So you can find the actual change in our timeline page for both Edison and Corey. So if you want to share your installation, um, you can go through these steps. I think this, is, uh, uh, he, this slide contains some tips that will be very useful for you to share your installation with others. Uh, one last point is we are in the transition to uh, uh, switch to spec to install all our NERSC supported software. So I would like to recommend you to go to this uh, website download it. This is just Python packages. It's easy to use. And then type spec list to find if the software is there already. The recipe is there, then you can just type spec install. And that one, we, we notice this one is especially powerful 
uh, to install s static version of the libraries, those are missing from the user lib 64. So some of the libraries, because our OS is small, it doesn't contain the static, uh, static uh, version. So this is a very powerful tool to do that. And once you get more familiar, you can try to build your code with spec as well. So in summary, uh, just a few. So use compiler wrappers. This is the number one summary, uh, the tips. And then uh, for KNL, remember to swap this uh, architecture bit, the modules, load this crepe mic KNL, and then build on login nodes as part as po wherever possible. And then the verbose output of a compiler is really useful, so you can learn a lot from there. So I, uh, there are a couple of tips. You can just read through the slides. You can find it by yourself. And the last point is try out the spec. It's a really powerful tool, and you will enjoy to use it, especially to build the user lib 64 stuff. Those could be your dependent libraries. Recommended readings are basically our website. I want to mention the Intel um, presentation if you like further optimization. Okay, the main page is important. I want to mention here, and thanks. Okay, sorry for the delay.